This meeting is being recorded. Welcome to Dark Sword Street. I'm Alfredo Martinez, and I have with me the one and only Anton Mastriani. How you doing, Anton? I'm very good, and it's an honor to be here, bro. Thank you very much. It's uh, good to have you back. And uh, yeah, so let's uh, go ahead and just start talking about some things that we were chatting about earlier. Uh, let's talk a bit about Twin Flames. Um, now, one question that I have about Twin Flames is, do you think that they reincarnate, reincarnate with the intention of reuniting? Not always. Uh, it depends on what stage of their lessons that they're going through and depending on the lessons of reincarnation. Um, some twin flames are purposely separated uh, during incarnations because together they would be a formidable force of power and it mm. would outweigh certain things in the system. Right. Uh, you see, a twin flame is, there's a big misconception between twin flames and soulmates. A lot of people think twin flames is a, a love thing. But that's not really the case. It's one soul that was separated into two separate souls that have the most powerful astral cord between them that you could uh, imagine, actually. If you take uh, Mikael, the Archangel, and Samael, the Archangel, they're yeah. twin flame. They're yeah. counterparts in nature, almost like a yin-yang sort of vibe going on. Okay, so... So would you say that a lot of twin flames tend to be Geminis for that reason? Geminis? Yeah, because of the, um, the twin and the, the mirror aspect. That could be the case. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. But mm. it all depends on how the soul was made and certain lessons it has to go through. Twin flames are usually meant to learn from each other there are certain aspects that one twin flame has that the other will lack and vice versa for example one may be more light than the other one the other one may be more dark and one has to learn from the other's light and the other one has to learn from the other's darkness but both possess light and darkness just different polarities and qualities of each okay so you had mentioned that twin flames are not necessarily a love thing, but just to learn from each other and help each other ascend, right? Yep, absolutely. And it is said that when they have both learned what they need to learn and have finished their reincarnation cycle, that they will actually merge back into one soul uh, towards the end of their path. Mm. So this isn't, isn't necessarily uh, one that someone else that you may, you know, have feelings for or want to get into a romantic relationship with this could be just what two buddies that like to hang out this could be uh you know people of any really relation that need to learn from each other would you say that yep absolutely and they'll find that they're identical uh not just personality like literally like twins but even in the way they look their energy um, and the way they've lived their life, the circumstances, predicaments and situations that yeah. have arisen in life and that they've gone through will be mm -hmm. like looking into a mirror almost. Right. Okay. All right. Um, now, would you, so there, a lot of people would say that their bond is eternal. So according to what you're saying, their bond is not eternal. Just according when they learn their stuff, they'll just go ahead and merge together. Yes, that's during um, Ascent that they'll merge together. Mm. So would you say in a sense that they're, they are each other's spirit guides, at least for the time being? Absolutely. Yes, they will learn mm. and guide each other through many things. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about astral, about the astral. Um, now, what would you say are some misconceptions about the astral? A lot of people take the astral too literally um the symbolism behind it is key after yeah. all it's all energy uh, a good example of this is something that i've been learning recently which is astral weapons a lot of people think that the weapon is literally a weapon in the astral but this is just energy in the shape or form or symbolic sort of shape of the weapon and you are wielding these energies in however manner you wish take for example um Archangel Michael's uh, flaming sword. This represents the wrath of the archangels, right. the punishment of the archangels, things right. like that. 
Okay. So would you say that, um, so you say that the weapons are more of a concept than an actual weapon? Yes. Yeah. It's wielding these energies in a weapon-like state. Mm -hmm. Which doesn't surprise me because everything in existence is, you know, symbolism attached to other symbols, which, you know, once you start a rabbit hole of symbols, you end up, you know, it just doesn't seem to end in existence. So mm, absolutely. Yeah. Um, now, what would you say is the ideal way for the average person to have a good astral defense? The ideal way is to focus on how you slip into a trance. Mm -hmm. Most people project when they sleep. This is the ideal state that you want to be in. And it's hard for people to get into that state uh, on purpose. Mm -hmm. The first time I did it, I was laying down on a couch trying to walk through different parts of my house. And I couldn't get the launching effect where the, the spirit leaves the body sort of. And I didn't really realize I did it till after it happened and it snapped back in my body. Mm. So the biggest trial that comes with astral projection is the actual launching of the astral body uh, from the physical body. Some people can do this while they're walking around awake um, very vividly but it takes quite a bit of time uh, to learn to slip into that trance state. Mm. Okay. Now uh, let's speak a bit about the uh, astral shapeshift. You uh, understand you want to speak a little bit about that. Astral shapeshifting is quite an interesting one. Um, I do this more with my vampiric stuff and lycanthropic stuff which you can go through many alchemical processes to unlock within you. Um, to actually astral shape shift, it's more willing the astral body. You have to sort of embody it and feel it. Before you wish to transform into, a, for example, a vampiric form, which may look gargoyle-like or demon-like, you have to embody the hunger. Okay of one of them almost and feel that primal urge for this. And as you sort of, you have to have access to your astral body though and be able to see through your astral eyes. And when you do this, you want to be looking down at your body and almost forcing it to shift. You Just as you would force tendrils out of your aura. And you want to see the feet change, the wings change and grow, the, the mm -hmm. face change. The, you want to feel the teeth growing, extending, like how they transform in movies. It's, it's a painful thing and you want to feel every bit of your astral body shifting and morphing like this. Right. Uh, that's really the key of it. Okay. Okay. And then also when it comes to astral, um, astral travel hacks, I understand you want to speak about that a little bit. Uh, a lot of people, including myself, uh, have difficulties traveling long distances, uh, projecting, especially on sort of this plane of existence, oh. uh, not including higher dimensions. So if you want to project to someone's location, most people have a mirror in their house. Now, everyone knows that mirrors can be used as portals, especially black mirrors. You can have a mirror in front of you, launch out of your body and enter through this mirror through to the other person's mirror in their house and be within their house without having to actually travel too far. And to come back, you just do the same method. <clears throat> okay. Now, it is possible for someone to go ahead and mark the mirrors in their homes to prevent people from coming in. Is that right? Yes, absolutely. You can do this by anointing certain protective oils. I've done that myself. Mm -hmm. And even using the protective oils to sort of draw protective sigils uh, on these mirrors. Mm. So would you say that when some people say when they see a shadow person in their house or something like that, it could just be somebody that they know, you know, uh, traveling through a mirror to spy on, just look throughout their home? It could be. It could be that or a plethora of different spirits or entities because mm. there is shadow people out there and sometimes yeah, spirits take shadows mm -hmm. okay 
And then also about the uh, astral arson. You wanted to speak a bit about the astral arson. Ah, uh, yes. That's more of a collection of one's astral weapons. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone will have an astral temple. Now it's yeah. very important that we work on the warfare aspect of astral stuff. When it comes time to not only battling other magicians, but the spirits will test you. And sometimes these tests come in forms of astral attacks, so to speak. Um, mm -hmm. I had a legion gifted to me by Samael, and I had to earn that legion by fighting them. And uh, I had to access my astral arsenal quickly go to the temple, which is already built. You build the arsenal and you will see sort of, depending on how you built it, a large hallway with racks and weapons and all sorts of things that you've collected or even made, because it's quite possible to make astral yeah. weapons. And uh, that's pretty much the astral arsenal. Then I came back and sort of fought these things off. Uh, they were sort of like, werewolf looking things but with no face completely blank they had the horns some had spears some didn't but they were very lycanthropic in nature and lion with lion manes almost and uh as i was doing this people i live with could hear the, my doors scratching like they were trying to get out as i was fighting them and uh after that ended i actually walked out of the room and someone said come back here quickly i walked over to them they, they looked at me and said i swear I just saw you covered in blood. I was covered in the actual astral blood of these beings that uh, I fought off. And from there, Samael came to me and said, you've earned this. They are now yours. Wow. Very well said. Um, a lot of people, actually, there's almost nobody who speaks on that, really. Um, one thing I like about this is that you tend to bring out new information instead of just rehash stuff. So. Yeah. Um, now let's speak a bit about possession. Um, what would you say are misconceptions about possession? Because possession is something due to Hollywood that is very misunderstood. Hmm. A lot of people think possession is a forceful thing. Hmm. Spiritual molestation when it is not. It is hmm. the unification of a spirit and you internally. All possession really is, is a high state of invocation, summoning them internally, but allowing them to take the driving seat for a little bit, so to speak. Would you say that a lot of people um, subconsciously tend to invite spirits to be possessed into them? Like without, like they give them their permission without them even realizing it consciously, but they are doing it on a subconscious level. Absolutely. Um, I believe Sander even spoke upon this in your last video with him. When people take large amounts of substances or they get extremely drunk, their astral double leaves their body. It, it runs away because it's like, no, this is gross. I'm out of here. I'll come back later kind of thing. Right. <laughs> and uh, that leaves you vulnerable to all sorts of things jumping in you and doing horrible things through you. Uh, astral parasites, imposters, these sorts of things. You can even form egregores on accident and have them jump into you and sort of mess with you. Since they're made of your own energy, it's a lot easier for them to actually do that. Yeah, would you say that a lot of times, like when people, like say if people get really drunk and then all of a sudden they wake up and they're in trouble or they did something that they really regret, it's actually their astral body left them and something else tended to jump in and kind yeah. of take over absolutely and they always really say uh that that's not something i would do or that wasn't me yeah and subconsciously they know that it wasn't actually them it was something else that jumped and they can feel them. it too that it's true it wasn't them <laughs> mm. or sometimes like would you say that some people if they didn't have a spirit in their house or a haunted house all of a sudden they do because maybe they created some egregores and they're just walking around yep absolutely mm. okay all right um let's speak a little bit about crystals now um i understand you wanted to speak a bit about programming crystals well programming crystals 
it sounds a lot harder than it actually is. Um, these things are alive, like a spirit almost, and they listen uh, to certain commands you give them. Well, not commands, but you ask politely, of course, because no one likes to be told what to do. Right. Um, so, for example, if you need this tourmaline for protection, you will have an incantation or even just command it to, uh, not command it, ask it nicely. Uh, could you please help me with this endeavor and protection, protect me from this, keep my aura safe, uh, sturdy and grounded from so on and such forth. Mm. And because your voice, your will carries forth literal energy in the ether, it will pick up on that like a receiver and it will pick up on that energy and go forth from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, in fact, um, to the viewers who are watching, I actually have done uh, a couple of videos on this, uh, on uh, programming crystals, uh, where I show you how to put a crystal on an altar table, set it up a certain way, and then say an incantation over it. Because you can really program it to do, you know, with all kinds of things that, it, that it's associated with. But uh, it's really mm -hmm. very easy. And there's different ways to do it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. What about cleansing? A lot of people don't realize the importance of cleansing, like especially when you, you know, get crystals from a crystal shop or wherever you get them <clears throat> different people may have been handling them and you don't know what energy they might have projected onto that so cleansing is very important would you agree mm, absolutely i agree 100 percent. it's sort of like buying something from an op shop uh and not washing it and just wearing it not knowing mm. what the other person's done in it yeah, <laughs> yeah no kidding <laughs> um you know, in a way, it's like buying clothing from the thrift store or just getting it anywhere, just not washing yeah. it, just putting it on. <laughs> Absolutely. So, um, but yeah, charging, uh, anything you want to say about charging? Charging, it depends on what endeavor the crystal's for. Uh, for more protection and healing rights uh, with my crystals, I will charge them with solar energies because mm -hmm. that's more correspondent to those sorts of practices. If I need help with something that's a little bit more darker or requires divination like tarot cards, etc., I will charge it in the moonlight, for example, and hold that uh, crystal in my left hand as I'm doing my tarot card reading or channeling, etc., to help mm -hmm. boost my intuition and divinatory abilities. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize how much crystals can help you uh, when doing divination. They can be of some mm -hmm. assistance. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, spirits of the crystals. I understand you want to speak a little bit about, about the uh, spirits of the crystals. I've only met the, the quartz crystal spirits, and it was like a guardian of the quartz crystals. This is to ensure that people don't sort of abuse the power of them or mistreat the crystals uh, in terms of evil deeds. Uh, when I say evil, I mean truly truly uh what's the word i can't think of the word but just horrible things so to speak. anything that would go against nature is what you're saying absolutely mm. okay and about the uh, portals within the crystals i want to speak a little bit about that this is a bit more trickier these crystals like i said have spirits and these spirits come through the portals within the crystals. They have sort of their own little mini dimension within them, I find. Uh, what I saw with the quartz crystal guardian is he showed me this almost like a pocket dimension within the quartz crystal. And it's like, like a dimension. And it's okay. much more different looking than this. It's astrally based, of course, but it's more earthy like and everything's sort of built out of crystal walls, almost like an ice kingdom would be, so to speak. Okay. And you can sort of project into these places through the crystals and learn from the beings in there. You can explore these places, etc. Okay. Very well noted. Um, a lot of people don't hear about that either. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been a good, uh, good discussion, uh, good interview, good chat with you. It's good to uh, talk to you again. Um, everybody who's watching, uh, make sure you go to the Colt of Belial uh, Facebook group. 
go ahead and, and send, her, send a request to join that. It's a lot of good stuff on that. Also, the uh, Cult of Belial YouTube channel. Go ahead and check that out. And also, the Eternal, Eternal Serpentry uh, YouTube channel. I'll have all those links below this video. Anton, thanks again for coming on. And uh, everybody who's watching, go ahead and like, subscribe to Dark Sorcerer. Thank you for having me on.